Day 151, physics, magnetic fields, specifically magnetic fields around current carrying wires. Quick recap, what is a magnetic field? A magnetic field is the region in space where magnetic properties or, or forces come into play. It's three-dimensional space, a space where, say, a compass needle would be deflected because there's a magnetic presence. So specifically here, why is there a magnetic field that surrounds a current carrying wire. It's the basic principle that we're asking about here. Well, it goes back to the most basic of the principles that I relayed to you last time, and that is, where, does the magnetic fields, where do magnetic fields come from? Well, the movement of electric charges. The most basic of electric charges are electrons and protons, but primarily we're talking about electrons here because those are the, the particles that are moving most predominantly in a wire. So the question is, why do magnetic fields surround current carrying wires? Well, because moving charges create magnetic fields. In this case, the moving charges are electrons. As the electrons move, once again, when, when an electron is not moving, there is no magnetic effect around the electron. So if you don't have the current in the wire, you have to have current in the wire, which is the moving electrons. Then once the electrons are moving, all in the same direction, basically, the direction of the current, then there's a magnetic field around the wire. And there's a couple pictures here that we're showing you. Uh, and we want to establish the direction of this magnetic field. Well, the direction is given by your fingers when we use what's called the right-hand rule. And it's called the right-hand rule because you use your right hand. And basically, you kind of act like a hitchhiker. What you do is you grab the wire, like in these two diagrams here, basically. You do the diagram on the left. So you, you grab the diagram uh, with your fingers curling around the wire, and these fingers here in this diagram over here on the left then represent the magnetic field. These blue lines represent magnetic field that circles around this wire when your thumb is pointing in the direction of the given current. You'd have to be given that arrow right there. That's the current flow in that wire. A couple other things to keep in mind here is that this magnetic field is strongest, which sort of makes sense. It's, it's stronger when you're close to this wire and it gets weaker as you get further. This is the same diagram basically showing the right-hand rule and the magnetic field circling around there and getting weaker with distance and showing that you can detect the magnetic field with compasses. They will point tangential to the circles anywhere you put these little compasses. We'll show you a little video on that in a minute here or soon. A couple, couple other things. Coiling the wire intensifies the magnetic field and has useful applications. So once again, this diagram here shows you a magnetic field around a wire if it has current. But if you start looping the wire, making a coil out of it, the magnetic field starts to intensify. As you can see in this diagram here, these magnetic field lines, these loops, these blue circles which represent magnetism, start to intensify become more dense, so to speak, in the, in where this coil, inside this loop. And what we do, if you can take these loops and make more and more coils, you can have a very strong effect. So over here on the right, we have a diagram if, of what we call an electromagnet. If we take a soft iron core, and once again, by soft, we mean a metal, usually iron, that is easily magnetizable and demagnetizable. In this case, what we've done is, that, or what they have done, is they've looped this wire around and around and around and around and around. And, and sometimes when they loop it around in a long fashion like that, they call it a solenoid, S-O-L-E-N-O-I-D. So, but basically it's just a long coil of wire. And in the middle, where that nail is, once you connect or turn on the switch, you get a very strong magnetic field that is then where the nail is mostly, and also outside the coil, but it's really intense inside the middle of the coil. And the, the um, nail, in this case, whatever your soft iron core is, becomes magnetized. So you could turn it on and off. That's called an electromagnet. It's kind of handy for little electric devices that, electric devices, electric switches, not mechanical switches, that you'll see in a future video. And then 
what you'll also see down here in the bottom, we have this horseshoe magnet. And between the, horse, the north and south poles of this horseshoe magnet, there's a very strong magnetic field, which is not drawn in this particular case. What's going to happen here is if you have a, a wire that has a current going through it, this wire has a magnetic field that's circular, kind of like these ones up here on the top. So the magnetic field circles around that wire. So there's a circular magnetic field around the wire. And basically between this gap here, there's a basically a linear, very strong linear magnetic field. And they clash because one's linear and one's circular. And it gets into vectors, which we won't have to analyze at this moment. But because this magnetic field is linear and this one's circular, they're trying to line up, but they can't line up. So there's a force. There's a perpendicular force that pushes that wire out of that gap there. And if the current's going one way, and we'd have to use the right-hand rule, which we won't do right now. If the current's going one way, though, the force will be, say, up. But if you, tur if you change the direction of the current in that wire, so the current in this wire over here is to the left, then the force will be down. So those are magnetic forces due to clashing magnetic fields.